What's going on, Facebook? How are you guys doing? And welcome to another lunch break brought to you by Rectech, powered by Kingsford. It's a little after 12 o'clock. You know what time it is. It is time for tournament food this week, all week long. We're bringing you our very best recipes inspired by golf. That's right. Without any further ado, I'm going to pass it over to my main man, your barbecue dad, Joe. Glad again. Five, four, there we go. Go back. It's on. That's what we're working on today. Make sure you're, you smash that share button. I'll give you three seconds to do it. Three, two, one, smash it. What's up, everybody? I'm Jody Flanagan, your barbecue dad, rec tech expert. Welcome to the rec tech deck here at the worldwide headquarters of rec tech here in beautiful Evans, Georgia. About two miles up the road, we've got the beautiful Augusta National. About four miles behind us, we've got uh, Champions Retreat, where they're actually uh, doing the practice rounds of yeah. the Augusta National Women's Amateur, right up the road, right up the literally road. right up the road. We've got a lot of guests up in the Rec Tech retail area mm -hmm. right now from out of town. We really appreciate each and every one of them That's right. for saying hello this morning. Sure. Hey sure guys, enough. thank y'all for watching always. Um, but yes, we are doing it a week early. That way you guys can do these recipes during the official golf week. Uh -huh. I'm going to show you Arnold Palmer chicken today. Mm. Now, I know a lot of you have never even heard of that, but we're going to break it down for you. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's going to be a great episode. Okay, we've got Chef John. He's moderating. Right. He's on the ones and twos. He's that beautiful tan mocha fellow that you just saw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. We'll try our hardest to get to them. Uh, just remember, he's not going to ask me any questions that the answer is no to, or if he doesn't think I know the answer. Okay, and that's not many questions. No, it's really not. Especially about rectangle. I like to tr I like to throw something in there every once. I don't a while. like that, John. When you do that. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. Don't like any curve balls. I'm a straight fastball kind of guy. Speaking of fastballs, baseball starting yeah, up. Yeah, baby. And gentlemen. That's what I'm talking about. We got the confirmation that they're allowing 33 percent in okay. Truist Park. And you, for the beginning of the season. And you've already got some tickets, right? I've got my season tickets. Okay. So we are ready, uh, willing, and able. So whenever uh, that season opener is for the Braves, shout out to all my Braves fans out there and baseball fans. But we are uh, we are going to be making some trips to Atlanta this year, boys. I've I'm already got I've got 19 games that we're definitely going to go to. I'm I'm excited. And you know, some that we could all go to as well. Well, that's, what I, that's the part I'm excited about. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, but we're going to get right into it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But in order to get into Arnold Palmer chicken, yes. I've got to explain to you guys what an Arnold Palmer is. So back in the day, um, one of the three creators of the, or designers of the Champions Retreat Golf Course, okay. owner Arnold Palmer, yeah. uh, used to like a drink. And essentially it's half lemonade and half iced tea. Easy peasy. Sweet? Tea? Lemon squeeze. Well, I like, I think it's unsweet, the official. Okay. But I like sweet tea. There ain't nothing wrong with some good old sweet tea. Mm -hmm. But that essentially, ladies and gentlemen, is your Arnold Palmer. Half oh, sweet go. tea and half lemonade. Okay? I love it. So, to expound and amplify and go off of that, we wanted to cook something uh, that we integrated the Arnold Palmer into. So I decided to do Arnold Palmer chicken. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna marinate. Well, we've already marinated. We're gonna brine overnight these chicken legs in sweet tea. Ooh. Okay. Okay. After they brine overnight, John. Yep. They're gonna get some nice color. Okay. A little bit of sweetness, mm -hmm. a little bit of earthiness from that tea. We're Definitely. gonna hit them with a little bit of some lemon pepper seasoning. Ooh. Okay. Okay. And a little bit of that Casanova's competition rub to give us a little bit of color. Love then that. we're gonna cook them on the 590 RT 590. We're gonna do it a couple of different ways. You guys can see I've already got some Ooh. on the grill grates right there. The grill grates. I've got them on the right hand side. Shout out to our, our buddy Brad Barrett. Uh, but the grill grates on their website also have this cool uh, grill grate tool. So make sure you check that out. But we've already got some on the uh, RT 590. The grill is set at 450 degrees. So this uh, this grill grates are about 550, 600 degrees right now. So we're getting a good. Call 
caramelization, good sear on the outside of those chicken legs. We're looking for internal temperature of about 170 degrees. We've also got some cooking on a salt block over here. Ooh. And I've also got some lemons on that salt block, so it's giving it some uh, good flavor. And then we'll also throw some on uh, this cedar plank that I just threw in there as well. But first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to get some of these things brined. I've already had some brined for y'all. Now, Jody, Tom Quinn asks, uh, any special Sorry, kind of sweet tea? Get some gloves. You, uh, it's just got to be southern sweet tea. Southern sweet it's gotta tea. It's got to be southern sweet tea, um, but that's it. Easy peasy. Don't ever think it. I know folks are going to start asking for what kind of lemonade. Me, I like the Simply Lemonade. Um, the organic stuff is best. Fresh squeezed yeah. and fresh southern sweet tea. You got to make both of them. That's how uh, you make it over the top. Um, but let me get to brine in these bad boys. All you need, ladies and gentlemen, is a gallon glad bag. Yeah. You do six bags of tea, three cups of water, uh, let it boil, turn it off, let it steep. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This will be our dirty board. So we've got, just imagine that I made this sweet tea and we let it come to room temperature. You need enough, about a half a gallon for about eight wings. Okay. You need just enough to kind of fill that up. Squeeze the air out of there. Okay, and let it sit in a lemon half pan or on a plate in your refrigerator overnight. I love that. Okay, and that's gonna give it really, really good color. Turn the clock over to these. Now I've already marinate, excuse me, brined. I keep screwing up my words. Throw me that box of gloves, John. I keep on losing them. But we've already brined these uh, overnight for, you gotta do it for at least 12 hours to give yourself some good color and to get the flavor uh, out of it. But uh, these uh, went at least 12 hours. I wouldn't go over 24 hours. Um, but these, you can see they have got a much darker yeah, color. Definitely. For sure. I've peeled the skin back, mm. okay? I've peeled the skin back. You don't want to separate the skin. You want to leave the skin on because we want to keep that skin, okay? And what we're going to do is, John, you got a good question. Well, well, we're you, about to season these bad boys. I got two questions. First of, did you peel the skin back before you put I it in the brine? I did not. I did not. I, I uh, put it in the brine without the skin peeled back. Okay. And you can see it penetrated it just as well as if... Uh, if we would have peeled uh, that skin back and then brined it. All right, second question is what pellets are we burning today? Today we're burning the Kingsford cherry wood pellets. Cherry wood is gonna give any poultry some amazing, amazing color. Okay, so you can see we're, we're seasoning that skin on the outside here, and it's just that lemon pepper seasoning. So we want, this does not look the prettiest, we wanna peel that skin Okay. And you want to not necessarily pull it, but you want it, you want to keep that seasoning on there. So like un or rolling it back on is a good technique because again, you're getting to save all of that seasoning instead of like pulling it, That's which, good. you know, that skin kind of pulls and clumps up that seasoning like we've got here. But you want to make sure that it's out all the way at the end and you want to give it a good squeeze just like I'm doing to make sure that that skin has gone all the way to the end of your drummy, okay? John, we got any good questions? Again, we're cooking at 450 degrees on the Kingsford cherry wood pellet today. The RT590, we got it set at 450 degrees. We've got the grill grates in there. We've also got uh, a salt block in there. You can check, right. pick those up on Amazon. We've also got a cedar plank in there. And a lot more grocery stores are starting to carry these cedar planks like that. Uh, in the utensils section, but again, we got that bad boy working with chicken, so make sure you stay nice and sanitary. So we'll season the outside. This is where the Casanovas comes in. It's gonna help us get some really pretty color I love that. on it. Just so Jody, very lightly dust to get some of that paprika on there. They're wondering out here, will the sugar in the sweet tea make the chicken burn? No, absolutely not. No, 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 it's, uh, and again, we didn't, it's not super sweet tea. Now maybe in super sweet tea, for sure. Right. But no, we want that caramelization. If it burns, that's a good thing. We want that caramelization on the outside, activating all of these seasonings. But we're gonna throw all of these on our cedar plank. Well, we're gonna throw two on our cedar plank and two on the grill grates. You guys can hear it sizzle. Oh yeah. You hear it, get on in there, Sherpa. You guys can see. Oh yes. And then we've got some coming off. Go ahead, pull those off. Got my handy dandy thermometer here check the internal temperature of these bad boys. 
So we're at 164. I want to let it, I'm going to leave them on. 70. 170, okay. We're probably there. We're going to go ahead and pull these bad boys off. John, you got a good question? Yeah, so if they want this recipe or any of the Look recipes they see us do on a live show, Jody, where do they need to go? What do they need to do? So all you guys have to do is sign up at rectech.com forward slash lunch break. Look at that. Um, fill out all of the information so we can send you those emails check out that skin on the outside yes uh, that grill grates really really centralize that heat so you're able to get those beautiful grill marks this stuff is easy peasy lemon squeezy now here is a a pretty crucial step when you're pulling anything off the grill it is the right time to go ahead and hit it with a little more seasoning as well that's right so we are going to do that and then these beautiful ones that we're cooking on our salt block. We actually let them cook on the lemons. You could also Man, do that if you so wanted to, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Jody, how many times can you reuse that salt block? Uh, you could probably reuse it. Man, uh, we've used that one at least 10 times and we're still good to go. I don't like to mix the fish salt blocks with the chicken salt blocks That's or beef. I like to keep a keep, beef and chicken okay. and then a fish one. That That's way we, we don't mix in uh, a lot of those flavors. But again, like I said, very crucial part uh, to getting extra flavor on your food. Hitting it with seasoning right when it comes off of the grill. We've also grilled up some of these lemons, so we're going to add a little bit of that Ooh, extra yes. lemon juice on there, that smoked. So good. And you know what I found, Jody, when you char a lemon like that, it gets a little sweet, a Absolutely. lot less tart, a lot more sweet. A lot less tart, a lot sweeter. And that's uh, with any kind of fruit. Um, or vegetables, when you roast them, when you char them, when you get that caramelization, it's going to give it a lot sweeter profile. That's right. Um, but, you know, we've gone so fast at cooking this stuff. Again, on that grill grate, it only took about 20, 25 minutes at 450. The same thing with the salt block. Um, easy peasy. But I'm going to make a adult Arnold Palmer right now with a Bitburger Rattler. We're gonna put a little bit of sweet tea, not not half and half, we're gonna go more Rattler because it's got some lemonade in it. But I'm gonna need you guys to smash that share button. Three, two, one, smash, smash it. it. Share this Arnold Palmer recipe. We actually did three, three. Arnold Palmer recipes. You really did. In this one episode, we did the original drink. That's right. We did the Arnold Palmer chicken and then we just did the adult Arnold Palmer. Shout out to our buddies at Bitburger That's for right. uh, suggesting this this morning. Oh, they suggested yeah, you were talking morning, to them this morning? Yeah, this morning, I was talking to them this morning. They I like that. Dude, mix that Rattler with it we were talking about food that's yeah. all they ever want to talk about they don't really <laughs> want to talk about beer they just want to talk about food and grilling so that's it. what makes them awesome i love it so jody uh right now people going over to rectech.com don't we have a, some uh, promos going on right now we have got a promo going on right now the rt340 and 220 pounds of pellets is 6.99 today ladies and gentlemen don't sleep on it it is going to go away. It is for a limited time only. RT340 plus 220 pounds of pellets shipped right to your door. $6.99 at Rectech.com. Don't forget, if you want to add 220 pounds of pellets, you can also add it to any grill purchase for $149. Like Easy like peasy. That. I don't, want, I don't want anybody to forget that. But all this week, John, what did you do yesterday? Uh, we did that pimento cheese, That's buddy. right. So you guys did a grilled cheese. pimento cheese sandwich. That's right. It was Holy so good, moly. Jody. So what, good. Uh, what did that uh, consist? stuff John uh, so we had that sharp cheddar cheese we put a little bit of mayo in there we had some lemon juice I mm. had some uh, dirty girl seasoning okay a little bit of Worcestershire sauce uh, we had garlic powder onion powder you know all the things that make your mouth happy oh yes sir yes sir but uh, you know golf week you know it's kind of when you start researching and you're looking for golf type foods you see a lot of foods that they have it like the turn and the turn yeah. is after you finish the ninth hole yeah. you go to the turn you, you get more water or Gatorade, or Gatorades, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, there's turn dogs, there's hot dogs. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, there's going to be hot dogs. Yep. There's going to be like chicken sandwiches. Yep. You know, that's a little easy. Yeah. So we're elevating we that golf food level. this week. We're going to take yeah. it to the next level, just like we do with absolutely everything. Arnold Palmer chicken. Yeah. I'm going to try it. Um, this was one of the recipes that I knew was going to be good, so I didn't get to taste test it out. But look at that. That um, sear kit did its job. It seared the outside of this meat absolutely beautiful those Kingsford cherry wood pellets also with that sweet tea brine gave it a really really good color but let's try it mm. oh but it oh, looks man. good and then the lemons at the end getting that extra lemon juice on there mm -hmm. holy moly but again that lemon pepper 
That Casanova's delicious moist chicken, getting kissed by that cherry wood smoke, man. And it and it's light and airy. You know, yeah. It's very spring light with that lemon yeah. bursting in your mouth. Mm. Now, Jenny, will this work with wow. any chicken, like chicken breast, chicken thighs? Absolutely. I encourage you to do it with chicken breast because it'll help keep some moisture in that breast. A lot of folks tend to dry those out when they're cooking them. Man. All right, Jody, we got a lot of new owners Holy moly, in the comment section right now talking about doing their burn ins, doing their mm -hmm. first cooks. Any tips for those people Man. out here? Welcome. Welcome, all of you new owners. Shout out to all of our Academy graduates this yeah, weekend. Yeah, that was so we much can't, fun. We can't, we can't brush over them. We got to talk about the Academy graduates. We had 34 of our closest yep. friends and relatives come in from out of town and uh, go through our extensive premier barbecue cooking class. They all graduated. They were all summa cum laude. That's right. They uh, sure were. All uh, we couldn't, we didn't land on one salutatorian, so they were all valedictorians. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, a shout out to all those new owners. We love you. We thank you for your burn-in, ladies and gentlemen. It's just 400 degrees for one hour. You're going to assemble your grill. You're going to take a handful of pellets and put them in your fire pot. Now, why are we doing that? You're only going to need to do that when you're first turning on your grill or if you ever let your grill run empty of pellets. The reason why we're doing that is we're priming that auger tube. When you first turn your grill on, even if you put pellets in the hopper and that auger turns, it's not going to dump anything into that fire pot. So we give it something to light so the grill doesn't error out because it will. Uh, if it's not lit in a certain amount of time, it will tell you, hey, something's wrong. Come and fix me. Um, the same thing with running out of pellets in the middle of a cook. It'll tell you that too. Um, but handful of pellets in the fire pot, put everything on the inside of your grill, including any accessories that you purchase that are going to be uh, used on the inside of the grill. Close the lid, turn the grill on and set it to 400. Once that internal temperature reaches 400, set a timer. Uh, let that grill sit at 400 for one hour. That completes your one hour de 400 degree burn in. It's safe to cook on after that. You can cook anything you want to after that, but we suggest cooking something super, super fatty, okay? Yeah. Like chicken thighs, burgers, bacon. These chicken legs would make yeah. a great first cook. Mm -hmm. You could also cook all of those things at 400 degrees so you don't have to turn the grill up or down yeah. and wait for it to get to temperature, okay? Ladies and gentlemen. So uh, for, for the uh, chicken thighs, it takes about 45 minutes for them to reach an internal temperature of about 175, 180. I promise you it's going to be some of the best chicken thighs you've ever had. Oh, yeah. But cook 20 is going to taste 20 times better than cook one. Why is that? Because you're going to build, be building up seasoning on the inside of that grill. Okay. You may hear some noises. The blower fan is going to be running. You may also hear that auger motor running. That is completely normal. It, it, that is completely normal. The grill is doing what it needs to do. The fan may turn on and off. Okay, if you hear that, the grill is doing that for a reason. It feels it needs to do that to maintain temperature. Okay, that's what that PID controller is all about. PIDs are the gold standard when it comes to temperature control, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we use them in our grill. That's why our grill maintains the temperature that you set it at and it doesn't fluctuate like the competition, okay? Um, but after the 400 degree burn in, go to cooking, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Remember, uh, you don't have to fill your hopper all of the way up. Okay, you don't have to fill up your 30 pound hopper if you're using the RT590. You don't have to fill up your 40 pound hopper if you're using the 700, okay? Um, but make sure you have pellets in the hopper because this is the only fuel source for the grill is the fire built by the wood. So if you run out of wood, you're going to run out of fire and your grill's not going to function, okay? It will air out. It will tell you, hey, something went wrong, uh, which is an awesome thing. You could also hook this grill up to the Wi Fi. Uh, your Rec Tech app available at the Google Play or Apple App Store. Make sure you go and check that out. Even if you don't have a Wi-Fi enabled grill, it gives you easy access to recipes or ordering uh, online quick in a hurry. John, you got a good question. I got two coming at you. This first one comes from David Sitwell. He hey, says, "Hey, what's up, David? Thank you for watching, brother." He says, "Does the sear kit sit on the rack or remove the rack and put it straight? Uh, the sear kit straight on? Both ways, brother. So I am lazy, so I let it sit on the rack. Okay, you can take the rack out and let the uh, great sit directly on the metal of the grill. You can do it either way. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just don't overthink it, okay? Another good question, John. Yeah, this one's coming from top fan Andy Kraft. He says, hey, Jody, I'm hey. doing my first brisket on the bullseye this I'm weekend. Have to clean the crap do out you of this, cook uh, it fat side up or fat side down? So traditionally, buddy, you're going to cook fat side down. Now, why is that? Because traditionally, 
uh, you needed that fat to protect the meat from the heat. Well, with pellet grills, there's two pieces of metal between the meat and the heat, so you're getting that protection anyway. But if you let the fat, uh, if you cook it fat side up, that fat is not going to magically melt and find its way into the meat of that brisket. Okay? Right. It's that intramuscular fat that's going to sure. do that. Yes, sir. Um, so for me, my uh, train of thought is you want uh, meat side up and fat side down. So the fat side down is not going to protect you from the heat or anything, but you want that smoke penetration. So you want the most exposed surface of meat that's actually going to absorb smoke and absorb that seasoning. You want in on top because that's where all that smoke is. That's where it's circulating around and then exiting the grill. Okay. Um, if you uh, if you season that fat, that seasoning is not going to penetrate through the fat and season the meat, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, just know that. So I always do pork butts, briskets. Uh, I always do fat side down. That way the meat, it, it, the most amount of surface area of the meat is exposed to that smoke chamber and absorbing that delicious Kingsford smoke. Another good question, John. Yes, Jenny. Lots of good questions I mean, they're, today. They're Guys, make sure up. you smash that share button to get all these questions answered. Three, two, one, smash, smash that it. share button. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that red rectangle. Make sure you follow me on social media at BBQ Dad Jody. Another question, John. Yeah, they want to know about the sear plates. Is it better to put them on and then turn your grill on and let them come up to temperature? Or once yes. the grill's up to temperature, no. put them on? No, because once the grill's up to temperature, if you put them in there, it's going to take much, much longer for them to heat up, okay? Let them heat up with the grill, just like a cast iron skillet. That way, when the grill's at temperature, okay? Your grill grates are at temperature as well. And I even wait longer. I'll wait 10 to 15 minutes longer after my grill reaches temperature just to make sure those bad boys are hot as heck. Why? Because when I put food on it, it's going to go down in temperature. It's going to drop that temperature. Right. When I lift that lid, it's going to drop in temperature. When I put food on it, it's going to drop in temperature. Um, so I like for that bad boy to be screaming hot. I'll even set it above the temperature that, I'm, that I want to cook at. And then when I put the food on, I'll you know turn it down just to get those things hotter and make sure that they are hot, hot, hot. But you can use the raised grate side that we have up here or the flat side. It's a great accessory. Um, they are easy, super easy to clean. Um, you don't want to put any harsh chemicals or anything on them. Um, but what I like to do is I, uh, when I change my foil, I'll roll my foil ball up and I'll hit my grill grates and my uh, stainless grates with that ball of aluminum foil and throw it away. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, but you don't want to put them in the dishwasher. They are not dishwasher safe. I like to leave you know, some seasoning on them. So I'm I don't the clean way. them a lot. I'm the same way, Jerry. Okay. I do too. Um, but uh, again, today we did Arnold Palmer chicken, ladies and gentlemen. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You could do this with thighs, legs, wings would be amazing. Ooh. We should have did Arnold Palmer wings. Jordan Johnson would have freaked out. Yeah, there would have been none left. Uh, this was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so all I did, ladies and gentlemen, we got legs. And again, you can use yep. any, any kind of chicken. Yep. We put them in a gallon glad bag. Make sure that they were submerged in tea. Yeah. That wasn't cold. That wasn't hot. It was lukewarm. Why? Because you, because, because that's why. Because you need to do that. Why? And it was sweet tea. And it was sweet tea. We that's want right. that sweet tea. We want that caramelization on the outside of that meat. We want a little bit of that sweetness. That's right. Coming in on it. Okay. Um, but again, you can make a salty brine with sweet tea if you wanted it to. And uh, I think that would help uh, actually suck in a lot more moisture, actually, uh, because that salt, that osmosis science. Okay. Uh, but we let them marinate brine overnight for at least 12 hours. Don't go longer than 24 hours, okay? Uh, then we peeled the skin back. Yeah. Oh, that sounds dirty. We seasoned it with some of that lemon pepper seasoning. Yeah. Okay. We then thought, we then rolled the skin back over That's the meat. Right. That sounded dirty as well. We hit <laughs> it with some more seasoning and then the Casanova's competition rub. Okay. 450 degrees on the sear kit for about 20, 25 minutes. We waited for an internal temperature of 170 degrees on the, um, the salt block. It was a, about the same amount of time. Now on the cedar plank, it's going to take probably about 30 minutes. Okay. Yep. And again, that we, uh, we let that cedar plank soak in water for about six hours. It was nice and uh, absorbed that water. Yeah. So that way it doesn't burn. Uh, but you can pick up those cedar plates at a, a local, your local grocery store. They're starting to carry them now, or you can order them online. Uh, you can also get that salt block. Amazon is where we got ours. So I just want you to get a chance to uh, correct yourself. You said that you are a foiler, not a scraper. People are going crazy out here. No, I did. I did. We even talk about yeah, foil. Yeah, you, you talked about foil. Real yeah, quick. I'm, a, I'm a scraper, not a foiler. Yeah, you're a scraper. Yeah, I'm a yeah, scraper. Everyone knows our barbecue dad is I'm a scraper. I'm sorry. I'm not lying. <laughs> I, 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 sorry, everybody. Um, but. Uh, 
This is lunch break, ladies and gentlemen. We are celebrating our one year anniversary yeah. of lunch break. We started it one year ago hey, today. Congratulations, Jody. Yeah, one congratulations, whole year. Chef Greg. That's right. Congratulations, Chef John. That's right. Uh, Sherpa, you were not here. When you we weren't here, Sherpa, break. but you know you're still uh, riding the coattails. Yeah, six you're, months. You're riding the coattail, Sherpa. Riding the coattails. Riding the coattails. Uh, lunch break. Um, but it is the longest running lunch break cooking show in the nation yeah, on the internet. That's true. It's crazy. It's totally true. Longest running. We do it every week, uh, every Tuesday, and Thursday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yeah. yeah, the girls took yeah. over lunch break, but it's technically a lunch break. It is a lunch it's break. It's lunch break first and then barbecue Wednesday second. <laughs> True story, Jody. Um, uh, but lunch break doesn't even have a shirt or a hat. We need to do something about it. We do. That. But speaking of shirts and hats, we need to give something away today, oh, let's too, give Jody. Some, do we have a winner to announce? I don't think you gave anything away last. Or Greg, didn't, I didn't, Greg didn't give Greg anything away last. Greg doesn't like to give stuff away. Tight. So I want to give away, uh, we have lunch break shirts, right? No, we don't have lunch break shirts either. No. Holy crap. Why don't you let them get a shirt of their choice? All right, so let, let's give away uh, five people, five shirts of your choice. Ooh. All right, five of you get uh, to pick a shirt of your choice, like either that. at rectech.com or one of the show shirts that we have. All you got to do is smash that share button. I'll give you three seconds to go ahead and do it. Three, two, one. Smash, smash that it. share button. Just smash it. Share this across groups and stuff, not rectech groups, but I encourage you, I encourage you to share this in uh, groups to where you, you think people don't know about Rectech. Uh, we're, we're asking all of our family members out there to do us a huge, huge favor. Um, and we're asking you to share this with folks that you think don't know about Rectech. We're trying to reach some new folks. We're trying yeah. to reach a new audience this yeah. year. You know, we want to grow the Rectech family. Yeah. So please share this uh, in groups that you don't that you think that yeah, people you don't know, know the, about Rectech. Yeah, and you know your the gardening people. groups, yeah, your bee groups. Yeah, you know, you know the people who aren't following. Your beer groups, your whiskey groups, your cigar groups. That's right. Um, your, your, lady, your dog walking all groups. All your lady groups. Yeah. Ladies. Shout all your out. boat fishing. Boat lip, fish, rip, all that lipping. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then even the even the stuff that you don't think that Knitting they would groups. even like it. The, yeah. the vegetarian groups. Right. Because the, the vegetarians love cooking. The gardening groups. Grills, the gardening groups. The sports groups. Yep. All right, John, we've okay, rambled, rambled on right, enough. Sorry. Right. you got to smash that share button if you want to win one of five shirts. You've got to uh, put in the comment, you got to tag somebody in the comment section that doesn't already know about Ragtag. Yeah. I'm, I'm making you do homework you for go. this giveaway. I like Tag that. somebody in the comment section down below that you think doesn't know about Rectech. It can be your grandma, it could be your cousin Bill, uh, it could be Larry that you just accepted his friend request because he's been begging you to be his friend on, on uh, Facebook for five years now. It could be any one of those. Just tag somebody in the comment section that you don't think knows about Rectech. And, and if you're a husband, don't tag your wife. Come on, you know she knows. You know she knows about it. And if you're a wife, <laughs> don't tag your husband. We know he knows about it because you're crazy about your rec tech ladies. Um, but uh, love this video. Share this video. Three seconds. Three, two, one. Smash it. Um, and then put in the comment section, tag somebody that you think doesn't know about rec tech. And that's you doing us a favor. And we know yeah, that. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, we really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. But we got a whole bunch of awesome content coming to you the rest of the week. Absolutely. Today John. at 4 o'clock, we're going to be doing Tuesday Tweets Me and Jordan Johnson are hmm. going to be doing some bar bite sized food. Uh, that's going to oh, be on yeah. Twitter. Bar Re bites, okay. Yeah, bar cool. bite sized food, yeah. On uh, Rectex Twitter page. And then tomorrow, the ladies. Don't of forget, the ladies are going to be here at 12 noon Eastern Standard Live right here that's on right. Facebook. We also participate in after hours, 5 p.m. Everybody's leaving. We are just now getting started where we cook a meal from start to finish. Beginning to end, front to back, left to right, for you, our Rec Tech family members. Uh, Thursdays is full of amazing content. Don't forget about Fun Day Fridays as well. That's right. Um, make sure you love this video. Make sure you share this video and tag somebody in the comment section that you don't think knows about Rec Tech. And we will pick five of you to Ooh. win a new shirt next week. That's right, five. Chef Greg's going to be announcing that show. That's right. And uh, I don't think anybody's claimed that $100 bill is yet. Is it still there? Oh, so Lord. make sure you claim your prizes, everybody. Uh, but I am at BBQ Dad Jody on all social media. Please follow me. I uh, really would appreciate it. I'm super close to having a thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. That means I can go live. That's yeah, all baby. you guys want me to do is go live. I promise <laughs> you. You don't want to do anything else. Just let me go live. Um, so please do that. He is Chef John at Rectech.com. He is Chef Greg at Rectech.com. I am Jody at Rectech.com. Send us an email if you have any questions. You can also call a Rectech owner by calling 706-922-0890. Anybody that picks up the phone here is going to own the grill and use it regularly and are going to be able to answer any and all questions that you have. They're going to work 
work with you and they're going to want uh, to make sure that you are happy before you get off the phone. So don't forget, you're part of the Rectech family. It's a lot harder to get out of the family than it is to get in. I ain't going to lie to you about That's that. We take care of That's our people, baby. Um, uh, but I want to send a special shout out to my mom. Today is her last day. She is retiring. Hey, so congratulations. congratulations to my mom, Christine Williams. I love you, mama. Uh, 20 years she has been sentenced to jail at the Columbia <laughs> County Detention Center. She has been in jail wow. for 20 years and she gets out. Today's She's her last it. day in jail. She made it, Jody. Yeah. I'm so so I love you, Mama. I'm so proud of you, and congratulations. Yeah, you congratulations. earned it. Now you get to hang out with your grandbabies. That's it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. Um, uh, what else we got? Anything else? Shout out to Darby uh, at the call center, yeah. and shout out to Ethan in the call center. Both of those guys, guys knocked it out of the park this weekend. Thank you so much for all you do. Guys, we got some awesome people in the call center. Yeah. If you're part of the family, just call up here just to talk to them. I promise you, it will make your day. Amazing people up there. But, um, uh, from everybody here at the RecTech Worldwide Headquarters in beautiful Evans, Georgia. God bless you. Give me this, John. I'm going to yell at these people. God bless the United States of America, and we will always see you at the RecTech. Do, do, do. Hey, what's do, up? Do, David do. Stilwell, do, Michael do, Chin. Do. Michael Red Chin's out of jail. John McDonald, Andy it. Kraft, it David King, Marcus Wood, Tom down. Quinn. What's up, Tommy? Robert Chestnut, like Gilbert Gaskin. He's still there. Uh, Rocky. Do, do.